Hey everybody, welcome back to Binary Adventure, Rust Tutorials, and in this video, it's going to be a shorter video, I'm going to explain the purpose of closures, why you would want to use a closure over a regular function, and what makes them unique. So uh, Rust has closures which are kind of like anonymous functions, they're something you can just place directly in line in code without necessarily giving it a name and it allows function like behavior but they have some special characteristics and so if you're very familiar with closures you probably don't need to watch this unless you just want to or want to know how they look in rust but if you're new to closures like I was I had, you know, I had used them before in other languages like JavaScript, but I really, it, closures weren't something that I used often, so I was sort of just getting by with basic knowledge. And so um, I found a lot of good, I found several videos on YouTube explaining the syntax for closures, and also there's a good video that I'm going to link in the description, a very good video, that explains how closures work internally in Rust. So I don't want to recover that because I think the video author did a great job of explaining it. But what I do want to do is clear up why would you want to use a closure and what's the difference between a closure, uh, what's the main difference between a closure and a regular function. And because you'll often see closures uh, used when you create a new thread in Rust. So I'll, I'll show you right now. Um, Rust thread spawn. So if you go look up like Rust thread spawn, you'll see what I'm talking about. You, you see this every single time a new thread is created, somebody's passing a closure into it. So see how there's uh, let sender equals thread spawn and then move and then this right here. Th this everything be everything from um, this point to here is a closure and so you'll see this and the syntax looks kind of strange if you're not used to it it was very strange to me so now we're going to go back and demonstrate this so right here what we have is a string called which is the word Johnny and then we have a variable called age so we have name Johnny age which is a u8 type uh, 25 and then just for example purposes we print those two out now if we wanted to pass it let's say we wanted to write a function and the function would add five to the age and and then print it out okay so one option is we could we could create a new function definition like this which i'm sure you've you're used to seeing so it takes in as a per, as a argument or parameter, um, it takes the age in here, and we're taking in an immutable reference because we don't need to modify the age, we just need to read it. And then we print age plus five. Okay. Now, the thing is, is that we had to take age in as a uh, parameter here. We couldn't, we couldn't pass age in to this function without taking it as a parameter. Okay. Now, you don't have to do that with closures. And so that what they do is they call this capture, quote unquote, capturing the environment. And what they mean is, is that you can directly use these, these variables inside the body of the closure without making them, without passing them in as arguments. Okay. So notice here we create a new closure and we say let my closure equals and the argument list is completely empty okay there's no parameters here however we use age in here we couldn't do that down here but we can do it with a closure okay so we could directly use age so it's almost like as if age was a global variable that was declared in static memory somewhere or something. So it, it's as if we did like this static, um, static age, U8 
equals you know 25 like this it's, it's as if we did that because now this would be essentially a global variable or have a global scope but it would still be thread local but it would have a global scope and then this function down here could actually access it because it's declared outside like this outside of main but we don't have that so um, we don't even need to do that if we're, if we're using a closure because the closure uh, it captures age from here directly that's the primary purpose of a closure versus a function so I'll go ahead and run the program so you can see the output so you name Johnny age is 25 age plus 5 is 30 so age, age is 25 comes from this line age plus 5 is 30 comes from add 5 and print because um, again we, we actually do pass in an immutable reference to age here in order to perform this now my closure doesn't take an immutable reference to age as an argument instead it captures it as an immutable reference down here so another point of confusion and this is the reason why I'm going to link to other video in the description is there's there's stuff happening here behind the scenes that you're not seeing so what the compiler does, I'll, I'll say briefly, the compiler, first it tries to use an immutable reference. And if it can't do that, so for example, if we were modifying age, it would then try to use a mutable reference. And then if for some reason it couldn't do that, or if we forced it, then it would try to use a move. So it tries to use the least aggressive method of, of um, occupying age. But it's doing all this behind the scenes. So it's it looks confusing because you're kind of wondering what's going on here. Whereas here it's explicit. We're saying age is an immutable reference or uh, essentially a shared reference, okay? So that's the main purpose of closures. And just to illustrate this point a little bit, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna do global age. Global age U8 equals 25. And then I'm going to add another function. So let's see, it's going to be add five to global age. And it doesn't need to take any parameters. And all it's going to do is it's going to print global age or global age equals. And then we're going to use um, global age plus five. Okay. So we'll just do that call here. Add five to global age. And then well, actually, let's let's make this like fifty-five so that we see a difference here. Boom, see, so we didn't, it, this, it's similar to doing this, except we don't have to make these variables global. We can just capture, quote unquote, capture them from the local scope from within inside of main. Because as you probably know, um, global state is tricky and is pretty much highly discouraged in programming, unless it's absolutely necessary because it could cause all kinds of issues where, for example, if this was mutable, then when we had two functions that were trying to modify it, then we could access, you know, one function could run before the other function was supposed to run, and then the second function would would then get the wrong data, you know, unexpectedly, and that, it just causes bugs and stuff like that. So instead of having to do this, we can just go ahead and uh, do this, which is really nice. Now, there's implications behind it. Um, you know, you'll get a lot of compiler errors when you're new to closures because you'll be trying to move things in and and um, borrow them at times when you probably shouldn't be and things like that. But I just wanted to give a basic introduction as to why people use closures in Rust. All right. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for the next video.